Hi there again everyone, Josie here from Live at 50 and Beyond. Thanks for joining me here on my channel. I have this project that I have been planning on for quite some time now involving this old TV armoire that we have. It's been gathering dust for I think over four years now ever since we moved here to this new place. It has been our catch-all for things that we don't normally use or we don't regularly use and we keep them here and unfortunately it has been just ignored and I figured okay it's time to purge springtime I've been organizing um, I will be using this for my sewing space and I, this is something that you can do if you don't have a separate room or space that you can call your craft room and this can help you kind of put things behind closed doors without you having to build a separate room or a separate closet because armoires you know they're movable uh, depending on your room situation it may not be a solution for everybody but this is an option that you can use so without further ado let me just show you how I converted this plain old TV armoire into a craft space specifically my sewing craft space okay so everyone here's how it looks like this is the initial setup this is going to be a work in progress because I have just started getting into or delving into sewing again I learned how to sew from my mom when I was in high school and this is something that I've been wanting to do because this is something that I want to continue uh, as my homage to my mother I've learned how to crochet from her when I was a little girl and then again, like I said, in high school, I learned slowly to sew. And then, you know, we both made my own apron <laughs> for high school. And originally, we didn't have a sewing machine, so I had to hand sew my apron. Giving you an idea that if, even if you don't have a separate or an extra bedroom that you can convert into a craft room, that you can make something on your own to, so that you will have your own space, even if you live in a small space. So here's what I've done, and I'm going to be linking down below the DIYs that I have done. If you have been following me on my channel, you probably already see the three DIYs that I'm talking about. So on the left door panel, you will see my shower caddy organizer that I created, and that's where I have a ribbon dispenser. The only thing different probably that I did here, I just added the little daisy on the top. Uh, to kind of make it a little prettier and a little girly and just to cover that command hook that I put there. But this is where I put my scissors and cutters and also colored pencil. The pull-out container there, I have spools of threads. So this is the shower organizer caddy. And I will be replacing those with uh, sharp fabric scissors. But right now I'm just demoing to you how I'm going to be using this organizer. And you've seen it also when I created this shower caddy organizer. This one, instead of the baker's twine, I replace them with spools of threads, different colors, that I will be using for sewing. And then, I still have my fabric ribbons here that I'll be using for my projects. So these are the smaller ones with polka dots. Okay. So I have that as a, you know, how I organize my ribbons. So on the right panel here, I have the DIY where I made my own magnetic memo board. I used to have paper clips here, different colors of paper clips. So I just replaced this with safety pins. Okay. So these are the thumbtacks and these are binder clips. So I'm going to be replacing the binder clips and thumbtacks with, you know, the pins the bobby pins, I think that's what you call them, or sewing pins. And I will still need this for measurements, so I kept this here, and it's just a decoration here, just to inspire me. And yeah, I just got this from Michael's for 20 cents, and I just added the grow grain ribbon. I have the DIY, so kindly watch that if you're interested in making one your own. Okay, on the top shelf here, I have my ribbon organizer that I also DIY'd and they're two-sided and those are for the bigger ribbons because the one that I made for the caddy are the smaller ribbons so I put the ribbons 
mostly fabric ribbons that I can use for my sewing and they're double sided and that's what I'm going to be using. Now there are three white containers with a clip that is uh, like a chalkboard and I haven't labeled them yet. What I'm going to be using them for is to store far left I'm going to be putting some overflow of ribbons on the, in the middle that's where the hardwares are going to be like for example the plugs or the adapters for the sewing machines and the one on the right that's where I'm going to be keeping the, the yarns for knitting or for, for crocheting. And you can see there's a small sewing machine there and that's just for kind of fixing things, the small projects or small mending, uh, like for example, fixing the hem of, of uh, my husband's pants. And he, he was actually the one who purchased that. He knows how to sew a little bit at least the hems of his pants so now I can actually do that for him. I usually would just hand sew his hems but I would like to use the sewing machine. So that small one for smaller projects. Then I have a clock there. It's still turned off because I don't have the right battery yet so I'm just going to put it there just uh, so that there's a design there or decoration. Now on the shelf here, on the second shelf here, you will see two Bankers boxes. I don't know if you're familiar with the pattern that I use. I use contact paper to cover them and I purchased them from the Dollar Tree. I use one roll per box. That covers already the box and also the top cover. I will be using those two boxes to store fabric swatches. Probably the swatches will be the one at the bottom. Then the other box would be for my patterns. So I am going to start purchasing some patterns from Joann's or online. I've purchased this brand new uh, sewing machine by Brothers probably a couple years ago and I still have yet to use it. So now I am going to be using it the first time that I remove the plastic and all the packaging inserts there. And then I'm still going to figure out, I'm going to be talking to my husband, uh, how maybe I can make something that pulls out. Right now I think I can be able to sew something small here, but if I need to sew bigger projects, I can easily carry this to a longer table. You know, the nothing fancy, you know, those uh, folding tables that you get from Office Depot or even Home Depot and Lowe's, those plastic ones, the vinyl ones and I think you get them only for less than forty dollars <laughs> and yeah we have one actually and I will be using that for bigger projects but for smaller projects I think I can sew here now if you could see behind the sewing machine I've added a couple of liner shelf liners that you can purchase also from the Dollar Tree and just to kinda break the dark wood a little bit so moving down to the shelf below I have those organizers for canned drinks or sodas that you use inside a refrigerator, the bins or organizers for um, you know soda cans. These are the extra buttons that came with our clothes clothing purchases and like between my daughter and I you know we have that because you know how those manufacturers those cloth manufacturers they'll give you extra buttons we keep them there in case we need them and here's some overflow another extra buttons this is where my pin cushion is with the uh, measuring tapes some needles are here and yeah and extra buttons so these are from target dollar spot a dollar a jar so look for more to organize different colors of buttons. I purchased this from the Dollar Tree. 90 pieces of buttons for a dollar. And then here, this is the binder that I'm going to be using to organize my patterns. So here's the scrapbook case. Currently it holds some of the magazine or catalog cutouts that I have. Oh, here's another DIY I forgot to mention. I converted my composition notebook, made it prettier, using some of my scrapbooking paper that I found from Michaels and this has the sewing uh, theme and it's just perfect and this, were, this is what I use kind of like a dashboard or visual board for the clothes that I like that I will wear and hopefully when I learn how to sew I'll probably be sewing them as well so that's a scrapbook case okay and then 
This one here is the thread organizer. So it's called the sewing box. Well, interestingly enough, this is the brand of this small sewing machine, but this is where the large pools of threads are. So let me just open this so you could see. So it's a carrying case, and they're already in there, organized there in spools. Okay. One is the overflow. I mean, these are the most commonly used threads, the black and the white. And then this is where my the hoop and loop um, fastener, fabric fasteners there from the Dollar Tree. And then this one have some safety pins here, the smaller ones, and then they're bigger ones. So these are the Dollar Tree smaller organizers. I have the fabric fusion here. Got those from Joanne, and I still have, you know, another one here, the small, and I'll be using them to organize space. This one are my fabrics, I, the fabrics that I purchased from Joanne's just recently. My daughter and I are going to make something out of this one. So the two bottom drawers, they are deep enough to store fabrics uh, for projects. Actually, the second from the bottom has some sheets and pillowcases that I am going to be altering. Some I'm going to be embellishing. So that's going to be kind of like my first project. And the one at the very bottom, that's where I'm going to be putting the fabric that I'm going to be purchasing for my future projects. So watch out for those projects. I'll be also filming them. Okay, so this is it. And again, like I said, it's a work in progress. Probably in the months to come, I will be giving you an update on how it looks like. But for now, this is the start. And like I said, I'm still building my materials. I'm saving up money to buy my materials so that I can start sewing. So that's it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope it inspires you to create one your own. Uh, I'm not advertising for you to buy armoires at all, only if you have one. A lot of uh, folks who used to have this in their bedroom probably are using it as storage. You can convert this to a craft space or craft area. Uh, this is just a base. You could probably make this as a scrapbooking armoire or planner armoire. It's also a craft and um, and also for card making, any anything that you're making. And it can be your own private space. And all you need to do is close the doors if company comes. Or even if you cannot keep it tidy, you can also close the door so that you will just deal with it the next day when you're continuing your project. So I hope it inspires you. I hope that I have given you a sort of solution. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also, please click subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And if you don't want to miss any of my new uploads, please click on the bell icon. And also, please comment down below. I love reading your comments. I love answering them. I apologize if I cannot answer real time, but whenever I go back online, I do take time to answer each and every comment. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment box below. I would suggest commenting in the comment box, not private messaging, because private messages, for some reason, they don't give us notification. And sometimes I don't see it until days after. And with the comments down below, Others also may benefit from your questions who may have similar questions but that's just shy to ask. So that's why I want, uh, I would prefer it there. But again, if you're shy to ask, you can also private message me, but know that I may not see it right away. Okay? And also, please share this video. Maybe somebody would be willing to take on this kind of project. And hope everyone is having a great day and talk to you again on my next video. Bye bye.